Hey, it's Elizabeth flying solo with the Web Canopy Studio Show. Today, we're going to continue the momentum train. Last week, we talked about, you know, deduplicating contacts and how it's important to keep your database clean. Um, and the next step in this equation to get to launching a campaign inside of HubSpot, um, well, actually, any CRM really, is to um, create some email templates and branding. And so, um, for those listening on the podcast, make sure you go find our video on YouTube because I'm going to do a little screen share today, um, do a really, really quick crash course on some little hidden nuggets inside of HubSpot. So I'm going to share my screen and this is a test portal. So there's all kinds of funny, weird data in it. Um, but the first thing you want to check, especially inside of HubSpot and a lot of other content management systems have something that is compatible, but in HubSpot, it's super duper easy. Um, you'll want to go and create your brand kit, right? Um, this will include favicons if you're using Content Hub. Um, you can use different logos, URL if you want a logo um, on things. You can set colors, primary color, secondary, accent, additional colors. Um, if you're using a theme, if you're using uh, HubSpot example for um, uh, your website, so Content Hub. Uh, you can set up your theme right here. And then HubSpot also has a few um, AI tools available um, as well. And that's what that brand voice piece is. The next thing, and so this is really for your website, right? Um, but then you can also use it to grab things for um, email, stuff like that. Um, the other thing you'll want to not forget about inside of HubSpot is to go to the email tool under marketing and then set, set your footer right? Because you need a footer inside of HubSpot, inside of marketing email, that's just marketing email, good practice. Um, so you'll want to set that footer in here. Uh, the branding I just showed you, this is the classic editor. You'll want to use the first one that I just showed. Um, but then the next tab is personalization. So what this means is you can actually edit default values for different properties that you use inside of your email campaigns, like first name, last name, company name, things like that. Um, you can come in and set, these are the global values. You can still overwrite them on an individual basis, but if you have things that you want to use all of the time, um, like for example, some people instead of first name, like first name is unknown on a, on a contact record, for example, you could do something like friend, right? Um, as long as it's brand appropriate, you could do uh, something like that for the default value instead of it showing up as a blank space. The next thing you'll want to do is go to marketing and then email. So inside of HubSpot, you've got a lot of different options to create an email. You can create from scratch. You can create from a template. Um, most of the time you'll do a regular email. Automated is for any email that you want to use via a workflow. Um, and don't worry if you create a regular email and you're like, oh, dang it, I need it to be in a workflow. Not a big deal. HubSpot lets you um, change it to an automated one. Uh, but in here, you can do things like manage your saved templates. You can even create a new template inside of HubSpot. If you want to edit a template, right, you want to select this and then hit edit. Um, and what this will do, so this won't apply if you edit a template that's existing. The changes won't apply to any email that you already have in your HubSpot portal that used this template. So this will be, you know, future forward. So if you wanted to do things like change where the button was or something like that, you can do that. And in HubSpot, just like on pages, you can actually drag the email and, you know, rearrange things as needed. And then if you look right here, you can see that there's sections inside of the email. If there's a layout that you like, as long as the components are inside of a section, you can actually save sections for emails, which is really awesome. Um, a common use case that I have very frequently for this is like text that's got some complicated formatting, something like an event or, you know, a webinar or something like where it's all bulleted and everybody knows Outlook, you know, messes up your text formatting. So sometimes it's just easier if you work out the kinks on one thing, save the section. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up save sections is because you can actually use those sections in something that's not the template that you just picked, which is actually pretty awesome. But we're going to exit this because I already have a podcast example ready to go um, so that we can go in and edit it. Um, you'll hit edit on the email name. So here you can see, like I showed you in the template, you can drag things around. 
you can also clone them if you want to. Um, but I recommend <laughs> getting things situated, um, putting in things that you already had in your settings. Um, by that, I mean your brand settings. Um, using saved sections, things like that. So let's say you've used a template, um, but it gets you most of the way there. Just like in the content editor in HubSpot, you can actually drag um, more modules, if you will, over to your email. So let's say you wanted to put in a video, you can do that as well. You can also, like I mentioned, you can remove things, you can drag them around, you can change colors, um, and it's really easy to do all inside of HubSpot. This looks like it's an image, so if you don't want it, you can remove it. Um, a couple other things, so if you wanted to, let's say you needed to add something to your email, you can drag over a two column if you needed something that's two column, and now I've got a section uh, that I can put things in. In HubSpot, if you have a product library, you can actually drag and drop and add products here. Um, so if you're an e-commerce brand, you can do that, and as long as your product library is built out, you can um, pull information from there. And then let's say you want text over here, and then I want to get rid of this, and then I want to make this a CTA for the bottom. You can do things like that, stuff like that. Obviously, this is not a well-designed email, but I think you guys get where I'm going, right? Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, email best practice is to have um, a 50-50, at least balance of image to text. Um, and you'll also want to make sure that your images all have alt text. That's just good practice, guys. Be ADA compliant, please, please, please. Um, you can adjust a few of the styling, corner radius, things like that inside of here, but uh, make sure you have those brand settings available. And if you set it on the template um, and then you use the template, all you would have to do here would be to replace the images, right? Which is fantastic. Um, another few things to look at are from names. You can come in, edit those, subject line, stuff like that. The last thing you'll want to check before sending an email is uh, recipients. So this one, don't send to unengaged contacts, is just email best practice that's going to help your email health. Um, and since you've the last step you're going to do um, before scheduling an email is putting the list on, right? So you'll want to make sure you have your list built. If you don't, that's okay. You can actually import a list in HubSpot or you can create a new list. But you'll want to select a list of recipients. And then the other thing you'll want to do is to also include a don't send list. So for example, let's say this is a marketing email for a product and you have a list of clients that's already using that product, you want to make sure that they don't receive it. Double down, add a suppression list here of those clients that already have that and then um, you don't have to, that, that way they won't send it or receive the email. And then you'll schedule as needed. I hope that little crash course in HubSpot was helpful. Hopefully you learned a couple tips and tricks, um, specifically with the saved sections. I love that piece and then working from a template, but make sure to manage those templates, go into the save template and edit it if you needed to um, update something or create versions or things like that. Work smarter, not harder. The templates are there to get you most of the way there. They a lot of times don't do the full job, but they can at least make quick work of stuff for you, um, especially when you're super, super busy. So thanks for watching and joining, listening. This is Elizabeth. Um, next up, we'll have more tips and tricks to get your email marketing campaigns up and running in no time using HubSpot.